Let's talk about block states. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we're friends, we're back in Taylor Jones more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about block states and block state properties. So this is a more, I wouldn't necessarily say theoretical tutorial because we will actually be implementing something, but it basically goes down into a theory that is very, very important to understand modding in general. And that is a sort of the difference between a block and a block state, and then the same difference basically between an item and an item stack. And well, of course, first of all, tackle the block state in this particular tutorial. And we'll see this by actually making a new class. So in the block custom package, we're going to right click new Java class called the bismuth lamp block over here. And this will extend from the block class, of course, from net micro world level block over here. I'm going to hover over this, create constructor matching super. And now what I want to do is this lamp block. What I want to be able to do is I want to right click this particular lamp block when it is inside of the world. And I want to basically change the texture and also make it glow, right? So when it's on, it's going to glow. And when it's off, it's not going to glow. Now, for the people who are familiar with Java, you might say, oh, I mean, this is really easy. We're just going to make a public static or, you know, a public Boolean over here, right? A public Boolean here. And we're going to call it like clicked, right? and then just change this particular boolean. And you would be right. If the lamp block or any block class or item class wouldn't be a single. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we were to go into our mod blocks class, right? And we look at, for example, our magic block right here, right? So we have something in our magic block and you can see that we're creating one magic block, but I can set down a million magic blocks inside of the world right? And I would only ever have created one magic block object over here, right? One object of type magic block. Yet at the same time, I have multiple different instances of a magic block and they're all separate. Uh, with blocks, I think it's sometimes a little bit harder to understand. But if you think about it in terms of items, right? A, a sword, right? If we go into the items class, so item, press shift twice, put in items, include non-project items, and we go into the items class. If I were to go to the diamond, diamond underscore sword, right? And we look at this one, we have a new sword item. Now the sword item you can see is used in the wooden sword, the stone sword, and so on and so forth, right? So they're all the same class, right? They're all sword item classes. We're making a new sword item. And I can have three different diamond swords in my inventory. If I use the first one to slay a thousand monsters or a hundred monsters, only the first one will get durability damage. You might say, well, obviously. Well, wait, wait, wait a second. We've only created this new sword item once. How are they different? Because they're not, they're the same type of item, but they're different item stacks. Similarly, same thing goes for blocks, right? They're all magic blocks, right? They're all from the same class, but they're different instances of the same class. That's sort of the idea. So there's a difference there. And, you know, sometimes that's a little bit unclear, especially for people who have just started, you know, uh, programming. That's not going to be too intuitive, but basically this is not going to work. What we need is a Boolean property, and that is basically handled sort of by the game. And that also is pretty nice because this is also handled automatically sync between the server and the client, which is also a concern that's quite important. So let's see. So to add a new property, we want to say public static final, and then we want to do Boolean property over here in this case. We're going to call this clicked equal to the Boolean property dot create. And then here the name is going to be clicked. And there we go. Now, every time you add a property to a block, what you want to do is you have to call the create block state definition method right here and then take the builder and then say dot add and passing in the clicked property. Extremely important that we do this. And in our case, with a bismuth lamp, we can actually define a proper like default state. So we're going to say this dot register default state, passing in this dot default block state dot set value. And we're setting the value of clicked to, in this case, false. So every time we set down a bismuth block, we're making sure that it is set to false, basically saying, hey, we don't want this to be on when we set it down. That's basically the idea. However, how can we change that? Well, we can change this by overriding the use without item method here. And in this case, what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to return a interaction result of success. And then in here, what we're going to say is we're going to say, hey, if if the level dot is client side is false, right? I once again want to note the exclamation mark over here, right? So we're negating this, right? So we're saying, hey, we want to be on the server. What we're going to do is we're going to say Boolean current state. So we're going to get the current state that the 
Now this is add, and we're going to get this by, look at this, the block state right here. So this is the instance of this block that is set down. So state that get value of clicked. So the block that we've just right clicked, that is the state, right? So we're going to basically get that particular Boolean value, whether or not it's on or off. And then we're going to say level dot set block at set block and update at this particular position, passing in the state with a new value. So set value of clicked. And then we're simply going to negate the current state. Why would we do this? Well, this is basically literally just flipping behavior, right? So this is just turning it on and off. So if the current state is on, then we're turning it off. If the current state is off, we're turning it on. That's literally what this code does. And that's actually all I really want to do in this particular class. I just want to make this lamp as an example so that you see, you know, how to add a Boolean property, how that works and stuff like that. When it comes to properties, control left click on this. We can see the property class over here, control H. We can actually see there's also integer properties as well as enum properties. And the, you can, in theory, of course, also make your own custom property if you so choose to. Highly recommended to we'll click on the block and press control H. And then you can see, as we've previously seen, all of the different vanilla blocks. And of course, they also, some of them have different properties. So for example, the slab block, right, has a Boolean property of waterlogged. It has an enum property of slab type, right, in this case. What else would we have? We have the TNT block. I'm not sure. It actually has unstable, whether or not it's unstable, right? We have the door block, which actually has an enum property of like, whether or not it's open. You have a hinge over here, right? Whether or not which side it is of a double half block. Crazy stuff over here. Highly recommend it once again. Go through some of those. It is just in, like insanely recommended to take a look at some of the vanilla stuff that is going to serve you very, very well. But with this done, we can now go into our mod blocks class and actually register the custom lamp, right? So I'm going to have a public static final deferred block of type block. That's going to be fine. And this is going to be the bismuth underscore lamp equal to the register block method with bismuth underscore lamp as the name. And then the second parameter is going to be, of course, a new bismuth lamp block. This is what I'm saying. We're creating this once. However, I can set down a thousand different lamp blocks and they're all going to behave independently of each other. This is going to have some block behavior properties with a strength of two, let's say, and then requires correct tool for drops. And then we're also going to have a light level over here, which is going to have, need a two int function. Sounds very complicated. We basically have, quote unquote, a supplier here of a state, right? You can see a state over here. And then we want to return an integer. The zero is no light level. 15 is the highest light level. So we're literally just going to say, hey, get the value of the clicked property from the bismuth land block, right? So bismuth land block dot clicked. And if that property is true, then we're going to say, or if that value is true, then we're going to say 15 and not, we're going to say zero. So that means if clicked is true, then this is also going to give off a light level of 15. Basically, it's going to literally just glow like glowstone, basically. And that is our general lamp done right here. Now, what we can do is we can add this to the creative mode tab right here. That's going to be a good idea. And then there's two ways to deal with this. First of all, in the loot table, it is literally just going to drop itself, right? Fair enough. That's going to be nothing, not like no issues. Obviously, of course, we're using data gen over here. So if you have not added data gen, then, well, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You probably will need to add data gen. And um, then the other thing is the block state and sort of block model JSON files. So in this instance, we could do a couple of things. I'm going to show you the custom method that I've written in order to, well, facilitate this because, and this is quite interesting, what I have here is obviously I have a different property. And that means that if we were to double check over here, some other block states, you can see a block states, wait a second, that is the name of the tutorial. Does that connect? Absolutely connects. And we've seen the slab before. You can see there's different types and those different types point to different models, right? So in our case, what I actually want is if the click is true, then I want to point to a different model, which in turn points to a different texture than when it is off, right? And there's two ways to do it. We can do the JSON files manually. Let's say if we only ever have one of those lamp blocks, honestly, just make it manually. Because at that point, it, it really doesn't make any sense to, you know, play around with the code too much. Because if it's one time, then it's like, I have it once and, and we're good. If you have 20 different lamp blocks that all are going to function the same, right? Let's say you add all of those lamp blocks for each of the different colors of wool, right? Absolutely. You would 100% do a custom method. And that is actually what I'm going to show you. So like I said, I have this prepared. I will copy it over. This is going to be available to you down below. And you can see this is just a custom lamp over here. And it is so ungeneralized that I literally have the block inside of here and I have it like all 
hard coded. So do keep in mind if you want to change this up, absolutely you can. And you can basically see as a high level overview here, we're basically making a variant builder for all of our states. And the state is, hey, if it is true, then we're going to make this particular configured model, right? So it then points to a model, which is going to be of cube all pointing to the bismuth lamp on texture. Otherwise, if it is false, right, if the clicked value is false, then we're pointing to the bismuth underscore lamp underscore off. Down here, we're making a simple block item, basically saying the same thing. Hey, just point to the bismuth block on model that we've already have right here. And that is it, right? That's literally all we're doing here. That is the whole idea of this custom lamp method. And like I said, with one lamp, it really is not necessary. But in this case, it's going to be fine. We will still need a translation as well as the textures. Translation, of course, very straightforward. And then when it comes to the textures, a similar thing is the case, right? We're going to have an off and an on texture. Let's just copy those over. Those are, of course, also going to be available to you down below for download. And there we go. That is indeed actually everything that we're going to need. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the data over here, which is going to generate us the block states JSON file, the loot table, and that is going to be fine. And then I actually want to show you the block states JSON file as well, just for the sake of argument. Like I said, you can argue, you know, if you have one of those, do we really need to like generate this? I don't think so, right? Even if you have two or three, there's a point in saying this is really not necessary. Obviously, if you have something like a button, yeah, that, I mean, you know, if it's complicated like this, then I would say it probably makes sense to generate uh, something like that in terms of data gen. But with this done, what we can do is run the client and see if it works. All right, friends, back in Minecraft, you can see the bismuth lamp has been successfully added to the game and it might not look like much, but if I set it down and I right click it, you can see, A, it turns on and I can even turn it off. And if I were to say time set night over here, look at this, I can turn it on and it, and it does shed some light, absolutely freaking amazing. And what we will find is that if I set it down, right, even though all of those, right, all three of these are bismuth lamp block like classes right they're all from the same class right they are all independent of each other so i can turn them on and off in whatever well in whatever order i so choose to and that is the whole idea so there you go that is custom block states and custom block state properties explained awesome as always all of the code is available down below but that's gonna be it for this tutorial next time in this video oh we'll talk about the new component system and item stacks hope to see you there so yeah